Hi, did you know that anxiety is not a mental illness? I know it sounds crazy, right? Because we're so used to hearing about it being so from the more traditional talk therapies. And while those therapies are very important, I'm gonna share with you three myths today that's gonna to revolutionize the way you look at anxiety. I'm Caroline Connor, and I'm a practitioner and former anxiety sufferer who's now helped hundreds of clients get rid of their anxiety that never thought they could. So what is this new way of looking at anxiety? Well, it's recalibrating the nervous system. You see, anxiety is actually a nervous system response and it causes a corresponding imbalance within the body. And it's not until this imbalance is brought back into equilibrium that you truly get rid of anxiety. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, will this work for me? And I'm here to say, I'm gonna show you today why and how it will work for you. So what are these three myths that are going to catapult your life back into success, happiness, fulfillment and freedom? So myth number one is that anxiety is a mental illness. And the best way for me to show, explain this is to show you. So your brain consists of two hemispheres, your left and your right. And in the middle is an area called the corpus callosum. And the corpus callosum manages the electrical signals between the two and allows them to communicate. And when we're all working optimally, we're in what we call a whole brain state. And this state can be as simple as those mornings when you've jumped out of bed and you've done all the washing, cleaned the house, cooked a week's meals, and it's only 11 a.m. Another way to describe it is when you're in flow. Now, what happens is from the moment we're born, we're subjected to stresses. And these stresses are intense emotional experiences. And again, they can be anything from witnessing your parents fighting to being bullied either from siblings at school, in the workplace, to your first heartbreak as a little one or older, um, to losing a loved one or a pet, or even things you've forgotten about, like when Johnny Smith pushed me over in grade one and everyone laughed. Now, these stresses are also known by the name of triggers. And what these do is when you, when you have these emotional experiences, your autonomic nervous system or your reptilian brain is fired. And the reason it does this is for survival reasons. We no longer have saber-toothed tigers, but we do have normal everyday stresses that have taken over from that. And once this is fired, also known as your fight and flight, it causes havoc between, in fact, it takes over the corpus callosum completely. Now, this brings me into myth number two, because they're tied in together, is that you only need to learn to manage your anxiety. And I'm here to say this is really important because you actually don't. It's a solvable problem and I'll keep explaining and you will understand. So what's going on here is up in this area is an area called Broca's area. And Broca's area is in the newer part of the brain, the neocortex, in the left side. Now, what Broca's area does is it gives language to the way you feel. So the word anxiety is simply a metaphor for the sensations, the physiological symptoms going on in your body caused by your nervous system. Those of the rapid breathing, um, the rapid heartbeat, the breathlessness, the restlessness, um, the sweating, all those sort of physiological symptoms that we label anxiety. Just like the word whiteboard is a metaphor for this structure here. Now, most mental health work goes on in this area and I'll show you what the problem is with that. So stress and trauma are different ends of the same spectrum. Tell me, take a moment to think about the last time when you were stressed. Could you think clearly? Now, 90% of you would have said no, and the reason is Broca's area is starting to shut down. Now, when you get to trauma, it's shut down completely, and anybody who's been traumatized will understand this. There are no words to describe the intensity of emotion going on inside you. Uh, you can say, I was frozen in fear, I was absolutely terrified, I was screaming inside, but they're just words. They cannot convey the intensity of emotion. And the problem with that is, by the time you get to trauma, this is completely shut down. Now, this has taken over. And it does this 
because the saber-toothed tiger to protect you if you stop to think when you are in danger you would die so it takes over to give you the strength to stay and fight if you need to or to flee now for a lot of people as they're growing up when they're going through these stresses you actually freeze and this is what anxiety is from you freeze because you can't go anywhere when you're being bullied by your siblings or you know lost a loved one or any of that sort of stuff you're stuck in this situation this is what's causing your anxiety not this now the common management tools at the moment for um, managing anxiety those of mindfulness of breathing outward focusing and all that are brilliant tools i'm not saying they're not and i teach them in clinic all the time to my clients but not as anxiety management tools just as general life tools and i tell you now i've had lived experience of this which is why i got into this work so i had severe and debilitating ptsd and complex trauma which caused my anxiety caused depression all that sort of stuff i did all the traditional talk therapies which is focused up in the language part of the brain the part that's shut down and i would walk out of there more churned up than when i walked in not just for days but weeks and months why because they're working on this area not down here Okay, and this is very backed up by science. You can go and look at polyvagal theory, Bessel van der Kolk, the body keeps store, all the score, all the latest trauma research recognizes it is actually a nervous system, a neurological response, not a mental response. So, and this 30 years ago, I just wanted to feel better. I didn't want to talk about it anymore. I didn't want to take drugs. I just wanted to feel better. And I know there's people out there listening today who know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and the third myth is drugs. You know what, if you want to take drugs, that's absolutely fine, you know, and I'm not telling you to come off them at, in any stretch of the imagination, but they do cause side effects. They do lose their effectiveness after four to six months. So you end up in this cycle of different drugs, different times, different levels, different amounts, so on and so forth. I'm saying there's other ways of going about it, ways that go straight to the heart of the problem, which is the nervous system. And that's where I come in. So I know you're probably thinking, oh, I've tried so many therapies. Will this work? This works. If you have not tried a nervous system response therapy, that's why. So I'm opening up my books today, my calendar for a whole heap of free 15 minute consultations, uh, phone consultations. If you're interested and this resonates with you, if you're somebody who doesn't wanna talk about it anymore, but just wants to feel better, this is what you need. Get in touch, let's make an appointment to have a chat and uh, yeah, click on the link below and I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Have a great day.